Well, brothers and sisters, David's youth and his time spent alone shepherding his father's sheep was also preparing him for something else. And it was for war. It was for battle. And David recognized this. If we turn to 1 Samuel, brothers and sisters, he saw the value of this shepherding. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, he saw what God was preparing him for. In 1 Samuel 17, in the 34th verse, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And so we must see a parallel in our lives, brothers and sisters, with this. Do we see, brothers and sisters, ourselves as soldiers, ready for battle? And this isn't just for some maybe certain brother who has a certain disposition or a certain sister who does. It's from the young to the old. We're all commanded that we need to be soldiers, we need to be warriors, male and female, young and old. In 1 Timothy, brothers and sisters, just a few scriptures where this is used over and over again. And so we need to make this a part of our mindset each morning that we're soldiers. 1 Timothy chapter 1, in the 18th verse. In this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. This was to be his mindset, to war a good warfare, brothers and sisters. And that's what each and every one of us needs to do each morning, throughout the day and into the night, warring a good warfare. In the sixth chapter of Timothy, and in the twelfth verse, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, for unto thou hast been called. Second Timothy, brothers and sisters, in the fourth verse, in the fourth chapter of Second Timothy, and in the seventh verse, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. In Second Timothy chapter 2, and in verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And turning to Philippians as well, brothers and sisters. Over and over again, this is a use to establish our mindset, brothers and sisters. That we are at war. And a call to the truth is a call to war. In Philippians chapter 1, and in the 7th verse. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have in you my heart, have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you're all partakers of my grace. And in verse 17, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. And over, we could go through more and more. We know Ephesians chapter 6, taking on the whole armor of God. And how could it be any different, brothers and sisters, when we think of it? We have this serpent within us. This Goliath within us, brothers and sisters. We need to recognize this. There should never be one day where it's just some kind of passive day and we're just kind of going through the motions. We have this inside of us, this serpent, this Goliath, that constantly, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, And we need to be committed against it in warfare, brothers and sisters. It might be a mindset, if we're not thinking right, that doesn't seem to fit with the truth. But we're called to, you know, have peace and to be, um, you know, gentle. Certainly, brothers and sisters, it has its place towards each other. But when it comes to this nature, brothers and sisters, there's no quarter. We're not supposed to be kind to it. We're not supposed to be patient with it. We need to engage it in battle, brothers and sisters. And this needs to be the mindset that we have. And also, brothers and sisters, and it's not, you know, some might not look at it as a positive thing, but we need to be ready to fight ever from within, brothers and sisters. 
And we'd be naive to think that everything is great morally and doctrinally in the body of Christ. There's never been any problems. Everything's fine. We know from reading our Bibles, brothers and sisters, from Genesis to Revelation, that's not the case. There's been problems and error in the ecclesia, morally and doctrinally. And we need to be prepared, brothers and sisters, to withstand it. It's our command for the defense of the gospel. We read, brothers and sisters, in Acts chapter 20. Just one scripture to confirm this. The the words of God through through the Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 20, and in verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. From within the ecclesia, brothers and sisters. There would be those who would arise, they would speak things that were false, and they would draw away, brothers and sisters. It's just a fact, brothers and sisters. And we need to be ready to do battle when it comes to this, brothers and sisters. We're commanded to, for the truth. And we think of Ephesians 6, brothers and sisters, and this aspect of being a warrior. I mean, it would be foolish, wouldn't it, brothers and sisters, if we were going into a battle and we didn't have a weapon, we didn't have armor, and we didn't prepare. It would be foolish. And these scriptures, brothers and sisters, are the means whereby we protect ourselves, we arm ourselves, we prepare ourselves. We can see error when it arises. We can see the deceitfulness inside of us when it arises, to put it down. We can see how to protect our families and our ecclesias. We need to use these scriptures over and over again, brothers and sisters. Now think on the other hand, brothers and sisters, of things that we can spend our time in that it's not arming us. It's not sharpening the sword of the spirit. It's not getting us ready and preparing us for the battle. Those things will hurt us, brothers and sisters, and we won't be prepared. It's not being a good soldier unless we are preparing ourselves, brothers and sisters. And really, brothers and sisters, it's a lack of love as well. We're all engaged in this battle together. And I'm side by side with my brother and with my sister, and if I'm not prepared myself, it's not really loving towards them. They want to have someone next to them who is prepared. They have on those articles of faith, those clothing, the sword of the spirit is sharpened. We owe it to each other, brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves for this battle. And there's so many things, brothers and sisters, that will waste our time and dull our skills, brothers and sisters. We need to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, is what we're doing sharpening the sword of the spirit? Is it putting on that armor of God? There's a category of things that don't do any of that. They actually dull the sword of the Spirit. They remove armor off of us. And so it's up to us to examine ourselves when it comes to this, brothers and sisters. And just another side note, brothers and sisters, we know that right now our warfare is spiritual. But in the future, the accepted saints, it will be physical, brothers and sisters. We're not pacifists as Christadelphians. We're conscientious objectives. We will fight. And Psalm 149, brothers and sisters, just a few, two scriptures on this. Psalm 149, in the fifth verse, let the saints be joyful in glory, let them sing aloud upon their beds, let the high praises of God be in their mouth, in the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. So it will be our honor, brothers and sisters, to those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ and they're obstinate, to bind them, to bring them under control and to subjection to our Lord. One more scripture as well, brothers and sisters, in 2 Thessalonians, in the New Testament. 2 Thessalonians, in the first chapter, brothers and sisters, beginning in the sixth verse. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God 
to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. And this is why one of the ways he'll be glorified, brothers and sisters, in his saints, where they will come and they will bind the wicked, those wicked rulers who will not accept the rule of Jesus Christ. So we're in a time period now, brothers and sisters, an age where it is not physical, our warfare, it's spiritual. When that new age comes, it will be physical, and we will physically take up war, hopefully, against the enemies of God if we are accepted on that day of judgment. In turning, brothers and sisters, to 1 Samuel chapter 17, We have Goliath, brothers and sisters. And in the 16th verse, brothers and sisters, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. And this was no mistake, brothers and sisters. It was by design. He presented himself at the same time that the morning and evening sacrifices were being presented to the nation. We read in Numbers chapter 28, brothers and sisters, real quickly. Numbers chapter 28, in verse 3 and 4. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. So you had Goliath presenting himself for the morning sacrifice and for the evening sacrifice, brothers and sisters. And it was an opportunity for the Israelite, brothers and sisters. Those dedication to Yahweh, that they could trust in Yahweh and his plan of salvation as they saw those sacrifices offered. Or they could look over at Goliath, brothers and sisters, and their focus would be upon him and upon his power, and upon his glory. And we see where the mind of the ecclesia was, brothers and sisters. And it's in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the 11th verse. When they saw the morning offerings, and they saw Goliath, it says in verse 11, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed, and they were greatly afraid. This is where the mind of the ecclesia was, brothers and sisters. They were focused on the flesh. It shaped their outlook. It dictated how they felt. And truly, this is a parable for us, brothers and sisters. We're faced with the same thing, brothers and sisters, evening and morning. We have those things of the world, those things of the kingdoms of men, the stature of Goliath in all of its glory. And we have the simple things of Yahweh, brothers and sisters. They don't exalt man. They don't praise man. They don't glorify man. They abase man and they bring him down and they exalt Yahweh. We need to make a choice, brothers and sisters, which one we're going to be focused on each and every day. And we know, brothers and sisters, where our minds should be in Philippians, brothers and sisters. We need to be focused on that evening and morning sacrifice that was devoted unto Yahweh. And in Philippians, brothers and sisters, Chapter 4 of Philippians, brothers and sisters. uh, Chapter 4 of Philippians and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, that are pure, that are lovely, of good report, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. This is where our mind needs to be, brothers and sisters. When those things of the flesh arise within us, we need to put them to death and focus on these things. In this age, brothers and sisters, of social media and all these things, so simply you press a button and you are bombarded by the things of Goliath, of the things of the flesh. And that's not where our mind should be. It needs to be on the things of the truth, on raising up Yahweh in our lives, and to draw close to him and his thoughts, and thinking upon the hope of Israel, and those things that are good and just and right. 
And so where will we focus, brothers and sisters? What are we focused on each morning with that Goliath and with that simple sacrifice to Yahweh? Our minds must be upon that sacrifice. Or else we're going to be afraid. We're going to be scared. We're going to cower like Saul and his men did. The call to the truth, brothers and sisters, is a very positive one. We're not sitting there all scared. We're just in the corner as victims. And we're just going to be a sinner and we always sin and sin controls us. It's not what the call of the truth is. Read in Galatians, brothers and sisters. And we'll touch on this again later and Lord willing, in another talk, but Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 24, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. We're coming forward, brothers and sisters, in a positive way. We're not going to be dominated by sin. We're not going to walk around and be a fleshly individual. If our minds are focused, brothers and sisters, on that sacrifice of Yahweh, we can have victories and we can have confidence in Him and in His strength. That's not all that would happen at Saul, brothers and sisters. And this is what will happen in our lives, brothers and sisters. When problems arise, if our minds aren't where they should be, we're going to be scared. We're going to become brought down low. We're going to see no way out. It's going to seem hopeless because our minds have been focused on the flesh. I know this firsthand. We need to be focused upon our God. And one more scripture, brothers and sisters, in Romans. An uplifting scripture, brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 8. And in verse 31, brothers and sisters, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If our mind is on him, thinking upon his will and his way, and cling to him in faith, who's going to stand against us? We can get through any problem. We can get through any trial. We can get through any sorrow. We need to keep our minds fixed upon him, brothers and sisters. He will bring us through anything. But the problem is we turn to the flesh. We turn to the Goliath. And then comes the despair. Then comes the failure. Then comes when we're just so downtrodden and we see no way out. We need to focus upon that sacrifice and upon Yahweh. He can bring us through anything. We read in that 17th chapter, brothers and sisters, back to it in Samuel and in the 17th verse of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. We see the loving generosity, brothers and sisters, of Jesse, of this brother which is also seen in his son as he watched this in his father. He didn't just show it to his family, brothers and sisters, but also to the captains. And compare the spirit, brothers and sisters, we must have in the ecclesia, brothers and sisters. One of love. One of gen generosity. One of caring. We're concerned about the welfare of our brothers and sisters. We're not going to just talk about it, that poor brother or sister. We're going to go and do something about it. We're going to try to assist, try to help, try to strengthen. And this was the spirit, brothers and sisters, that Jesse brought through his son into the ecclesia. But as we talked about before, brothers and sisters, when we become so wrapped up in me, my problems, how I feel, what I need, then we lose this godly spirit, brothers and sisters. We can't have it because we're so about ourselves. And this is why we must keep this spirit, brothers and sisters, in attitude. We must keep the spirit of selfishness, brothers and sisters, out of the ecclesia, out of our lives. Constantly be drawn towards others. How can we help them? What can I do for them? Compare the words of Christ, brothers and sisters, of Jesus Christ. And it should really humble us in Matthew. Chapter 20 of Matthew. And in verse 26, brothers and sisters, of Matthew chapter 20, But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. 
And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. If this is what Christ brought, brothers and sisters, he wasn't even going to be so. He came to do for others, even giving up his own life. We can't do enough for each other then, brothers and sisters. We should be going above and beyond for each other. There should be no limit of what we'll do for each other. This is the spirit we must bring in, brothers and sisters, but we can so quickly turn to selfishness. We can become hardened towards our brothers and sisters and wrapped us in us and in me. We must keep the spirit of Christ, brothers and sisters. He came to serve even the giving of his own life. And it's interesting, brothers and sisters, because we see, brothers and sisters, David and Goliath, and we see these, you know, Saul. But there's no army, brothers and sisters, or ability to fight without the Jesses and the Ecclesia, who give the food. They give the refreshments. They ask about the welfare of the army. Take those things away, and there's no army. There's no will. There's no ability to fight. There's no strength. Everyone is of great value in the Ecclesia, brothers and sisters. No matter what position we have, the smallest things we do, brothers and sisters, is of great value. And we all need to be viewing it in that way, brothers and sisters. Someone speaks, you know, yeah, that's a great thing, but so what? It's not the most elevated, greatest thing. Someone who sets the table, brothers and sisters, is of just greater value. And so we need to bring this spirit, brothers and sisters, everyone working together so we can keep the Ecclesia a healthy fighting body, brothers and sisters. And so this is a mindset that we want to make sure we have, brothers and sisters. We turn our brothers and sisters to the 40th verse of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in his script and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Five smooth stones, brothers and sisters, and as we read from Daniel, that stone that was cut out, cut out without hands, brothers and sisters, these were shaped by the water, brothers and sisters, not by man. And he plucked these out of the brook, brothers and sisters, through the water. And we think of our Lord, brothers and sisters. He was that stone cut out without hands. The process that he went through, brothers and sisters, is the same one that he is putting us through. We read in Ephesians, brothers and sisters, chapter 5. We need to keep this in mind as we go through our life, brothers and sisters. In Ephesians chapter 5, and in verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the word, brothers and sisters, this is what shapes this powerful spiritual tool we have, brothers and sisters, is this word. It can smooth away rough edges, brothers and sisters. And this is what he's using, brothers and sisters. Hopefully we're taking advantage of it because we need to work hand in hand. If we're not taking this in all the time, we're not going to be shaped by the word. And what are the things of the world, brothers and sisters? The things of the flesh. What is shaping us, brothers and sisters? What's shaping our children and our homes? Is it the things of the world, brothers and sisters? Or is it the things of the world? They're not going to smooth us away, brothers and sisters. They're not going to sanctify us. They're not going to allow us to be ready for our Lord. They're not going to help develop in our children spiritual qualities. How much time is spent on this word, brothers and sisters? Not enough. We can't spend enough on it, brothers and sisters. And they're talking about it in our homes and speaking to it to our children. And we see the beautiful type, brothers and sisters, of our Lord and David as he comes from the waters of the stream, brothers and sisters, and he heads to battle with Goliath. And if we compare our Lord, brothers and sisters, in Mark chapter 1, it's a beautiful type of him. Mark chapter 1 and verse 10. 
And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit dried with him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of the adversary, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. So we see this type in David as he passed through those waters of baptism and headed to battle. First, the adversary, first, the Goliath. And the Lord was armed, brothers and sisters, with that rock of God's word, and he headed to battle, brothers and sisters. And we read, brothers and sisters, back in Samuel, the 17th chapter. And in the 45th verse, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. The title of Yahweh that David is using here, brothers and sisters, means he who will be armies. The mighty ones of the armies of Israel. Why is he saying this to him, brothers and sisters? Why is he saying this to Goliath? Because his mind, brothers and sisters, like our Lord in the wilderness, was fixed upon the word of God. David is declaring his faith in God's word. We turn to Deuteronomy, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 20. In verse 1, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses, and chariots, and an army more than thou. Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts be faint, fear not, be not and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you, to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. This was on the mind of David. He had a conviction in God's word. He believed in it. And read of our Lord in the wilderness, brothers and sisters. What saith the scripture? As it is written, so it is written. His mind fixed upon that word of God as he repelled those things of the adversary. And this is where our minds must be, brothers and sisters. Fixed upon the word of God. But it's, this is scary to me, brothers and sisters. And I see it in my own life, and it's very dangerous, brothers and sisters, when we think of ourselves and of our children, of what can happen to the word, though, brothers and sisters. Think, we take in the word of God. But in Mark, the fourth chapter, brothers and sisters. Mark chapter four. Mark 4 and in the 18th verse. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world in the deceitfulness of riches, in the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Brothers and sisters, we can't just be reading the word and going to study days and study weekends and Bible schools. It still can become choked. If we are not getting these things out of our lives, brothers and sisters, if we're not doing battle against them, being on guard about the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of things, and the lusts of other things, brothers and sisters, this can choke the word and it can become unfruitful. And so we must make sure there's no competition, brothers and sisters, in our lives, because this is a scary thing that can happen unless we are on guard with that sword of the Spirit. And back, brothers and sisters, to 1 Samuel, brothers and sisters. And these are some comforting words, brothers and sisters, as we continue on in the account. And in verse 47 of 1 Samuel 17. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will, and he will give you into 
our hands, brothers and sisters. David was not focused on himself and his personal victory over Goliath. It would give the ecclesia victory, his brothers and sisters. This is where his mind was as he went into battle. It was not his personal glory. It was on the salvation of his brothers and sisters. And this was on our Lord's mind, brothers and sisters, as we know from many of the prophets and Psalms. He went in with me and you on his mind. And this is who shared in the victory, brothers and sisters. And if we follow after Christ into battle faithfully, allow him to guide us, we can engage and partake of this victory as well, brothers and sisters. He will fight for us. We need to be faithful, brothers and sisters. We read in verse 49, brothers and sisters. And David put his hand in his bag, and he took thence a stone, and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the ground. Let us be clear, brothers and sisters, as to what the type is here. The, what the Lord crucified, what he put to death, and it was the flesh, brothers and sisters. He put it to death, brothers and sisters. Those things that arose in him, those affections and lusts, as the scriptures say. And this is the only way, brothers and sisters, to deal with this nature. It can't be reasoned with. It can't be converted. It needs to be crushed, brothers and sisters. And it's not a pleasant thing, brothers and sisters. We shouldn't expect it to be. Compare all the types, brothers and sisters. From the Garden of Eden, the animal being put to death and killed. The painful act of circumcision, brothers and sisters. The symbol of baptism where it's a celebration of someone's death. And then rising and celebrating their new life. Something is being killed, brothers and sisters. It is not an enjoyable process, brothers and sisters. It's a painful one. And we shouldn't look any other way, brothers and sisters, and think somehow it's going to be an enjoyable process, this putting to death the flesh. We read of Christ's mindset in Luke chapter 12, brothers and sisters. Luke chapter 12, and in the 50th, 50th verse, Christ says, But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened, or as the margin says, pained, Till it be accomplished, brothers and sisters. And so we need to prepare our minds, brothers and sisters, for this battle. And not think our walk in the truth is going to be some easy thing, or it's just enjoyable, and we have a good time, and then we enter into the kingdom. It is through much tribulation that we must enter the kingdom of God. We must prepare our children for this as well. The truth is not going to be fun all the time. <laughs> it's just not the reality of the situation. There's going to be a process of over and over putting to death the old man and going through trials and going through struggles. And of course there's joy, brothers and sisters. What greater joy in looking forward to the kingdom? Nothing compares to that. And all the other blessings that go along with it. But we must prepare our minds, brothers and sisters, for this struggle and for this strain of battling with the flesh over and over again each and every day. And we know, brothers and sisters, that it sunk into the forehead and this is where the battle starts, brothers and sisters. It starts inside of our heads. And we see the type of Christ, brothers and sisters, in Exodus chapter 28. Real quickly, turn there. Exodus chapter 28, in the 36th verse, speaking of the high priest, And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, engrave upon it the gravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And so this, brothers and sisters, what the mind that Christ developed, it was always holiness unto the Lord, brothers and sisters. This is what took place in his mind. He put to death those things of the flesh that arose in him and always dwelt upon the things of his Father. And this is our commission as well, brothers and sisters. This wasn't just done for us and it's a substitute. We don't believe in a substitute sacrifice. He was a representation of what we have said that we will do in our day of baptism. And when we come forward to partake of the emblems. 
We read in Romans chapter 2, brothers and sisters, of this. Romans chapter 2, in the 28th verse. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, or of the mind, brothers and sisters. This is what a true Jew is. Circumcision that takes place inside of our heads, brothers and sisters. Is this what is taking place in our minds, brothers and sisters? Or do we just carelessly allow thoughts to go through our minds and we just kind of float through our day? We should be determining the things that are going through our mind, brothers and sisters. And if they're things that are of the flesh, they need to be put to death. We need to be thinking on the things of God. This needs to be taking place, brothers and sisters, actively in our minds. This struggle. So we follow and fellowship the suffering of our Lord. It's something very personal, brothers and sisters, that no one else sees. I don't know what's going on in your mind or in your head. You don't know what's going on in mind. There could be temptations raging, mindset could be off somewhere else. But it will be the subject on the judgment seat, brothers and sisters, in the day of judgment. This will be looked at. We read in Romans chapter 2, brothers and sisters, in that same chapter, he's speaking about that inward circumcision that needs to take place in our minds. Romans chapter 2 and in verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. It'd be a very personal thing, brothers and sisters. I go before the judgment seat and it's seen what train of thought I was focused upon. What things did I dwell upon in my mind? Maybe in the outward appearance, I seemed as if I was being, you know, a nice brother and doing this and doing that with my family. My mindset could be somewhere totally different, brothers and sisters. My attentions, intentions could be somewhere totally different. This is why we need to use that sword of the spirit, brothers and sisters, and cut away those things that arise in our minds. We read as well, brothers and sisters, in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. This is where this true Goliath battle begins, brothers and sisters. Inside of our heads. This is where the stone needs to sink in. That word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and in the 5th verse. Therefore judge nothing before the time till the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. They'll be made manifest, brothers and sisters, the counsels of the mind. The things that we thought upon, the things that were motivating us. Did that take place in our mind, that circumcision? That putting to death of those things of the flesh that arose and thinking upon those things that were good and just and holy and true? Because this is what's said as the true circumcision, brothers and sisters. We can't just be engaged in the outward things that we're trying to do right and to do wrong and be focused on. It starts inner, in our minds. This is where the battle begins, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and one more brothers and sisters thought before we close back to 1 Samuel the 17th chapter therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head as we've been speaking about, brothers and sisters, that head where that true circumcision begins therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel, brothers and sisters, the rest of the Ecclesia, and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines, till thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharem, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. We must be encouraged, brothers and sisters, to do our part. David killed the champion. But the rest of the Ecclesia went forward in battle. And they had successes. And they overran the army of the Philistines, brothers and sisters. Our Lord has put to death the flesh. Cutting off the head of the Goliath. That body of sin, sin's flesh. We now, brothers and sisters, have a hope for successes, brothers and sisters. 
We need to be encouraged by this, brothers and sisters. As we said before, we're not some helpless victim destined for failure. That's not what the ecclesia is made up of, brothers and sisters. We're not going to be dominated by the flesh. Those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. We are not servants to sin anymore, brothers and sisters. In Romans chapter 6, And in the 22nd verse, But now being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, in the end everlasting life. All we produced, brothers and sisters, before our lives in the truth was sin. We were servant to it. We've changed masters, brothers and sisters. It's no longer sin. We're servants of God and we can produce fruit and do good things and holy things. In Romans chapter 8, the 37th verse, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This is the mindset we need to have, brothers and sisters, going forth as conquerors. It's a positive one of victory, brothers and sisters, that we can have if we cling to our Lord and to our Savior, thinking upon those things of the Spirit, engaging in battle with the things of the flesh. No one's here going to do it perfectly, but if we put our hand to the battle, brothers and sisters, and focus on the things of the truth, he will bring us through it. He's promised he will. And so may that encourage us, brothers and sisters, as we fight that fight with David.